Hey, Chris, uh, I want to play you sound from my childhood. All right. He likes it. He likes it. He likes it. <laughs> not what I was expecting. Yeah, well, not only is my name Michael, and I used to get teased on the playground of this little taunt because it was kind of an ever-present commercial, but uh, I actually, I don't know if it is because of this commercial, but Chris, I love, I have an admission to make, I love cereal. Okay. Uh, yes. I, 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 everybody on the spoon slack is well aware of your love for cereal, Mike. And normally we don't do podcasts about a box of cereal or boxes of cereal, but I just wanted to talk about this. That'd be fun. Uh, also, I think there's some particularly interesting implications or, or things that Magic Spoon is doing that's at least worth talking about. So maybe I think we should sort of level set here for people. Magic Spoon, uh, the reason we dropped 40 bucks on four small diminutive boxes of cereal. So we, I can't remember how it came up, but we learned about Magic Spoon, which has like no wheat, no gluten. It's, it's uh, soy free. It's keto friendly. It's got 12 grams of protein, only three net carbs. Like it's this literally, as the name implies, a magic cereal. <laughs> And it's not cheap, and you can only get it through Mag – it's called Magic Spoon, and it comes in four varieties. And guess what? You have to buy all four varieties. You have to buy all four, and you have to buy it direct from the company. You're not picking it up at Costco or Target. Yes. And then at the time when we purchased it, you were waiting a month because they were so back-ordered. Uh, and so we we placed our orders around the same time. Uh, and our bowls arrived, our, our magic spoon boxes arrived earlier this week. And before we get into the taste, you know, Mike, I'm wondering what you thought of the overall like packaging and presentation. I felt it was very well designed. It just struck me as uh, visually differentiated from any box of cereal I've seen. So just presentation yeah. and art, um, very well done. Yeah, it has a very uh, late 60s, early 70s uh, yellow submarine vibe to it i think you, yeah, i think yellow supreme pretty much sums it up um in terms of the artwork and and the colors are stunning they pop each box has like you know like fruit is very fruity um and and the color tones are fruity uh same with like frosted and so um and as you said there's these four different flavors um and just overall you mentioned all the attributes of it like it's a magic cereal you know high protein low carbs uh, n not using traditional sugars. Um, and it tastes that here's the thing. It really, really tastes like, like sugar cereal, like the kind of cereal I had as a kid. Yeah. Well, that's its whole thing, right? It's like kid cereal for grownups. And so actually, you know, yes. So the spoiler alert, TLDR, it's delicious. And I'm going to, I feel pretty confident in saying you and I have both been gobbling it up by the bowl full since we got ours. Yeah. And like, I feel like it's making me a bad parent because my kids keep asking where that cereal is and I've like hid it from them. Like it's I'm literally, <laughs> it's, it's, it's creating bad, it's creating bad habits. <laughs> You're like gaslighting. I'm becoming a bad parent. <laughs> You're yeah. the Sarah Huckabee of your family. You're just gaslighting. They are monsters and would consume it probably in one sitting. So there's good reason for that. But, uh, but yeah, so it, it tastes really good. Um, you, I think you've, have you, have you fed it to your kid and, and have you liked it? Yeah. Well, you know, I tried giving him the fruity one, which is a shocking pink color and he tried one and didn't seem, he's not a really, a really like a cereal eater anyway. So he was sort of like, meh. Um, but my wife liked it. I, 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 I came downstairs to find that the frosted box had been torn into, and I think she had helped herself to that, uh, it is, but it is, it's really, it's the first time I've had cereal in a long, I used to eat Weetabix, which is basically just, fl you know, flavorless cardboard that's shredded up uh, and pressed into a puck. Um, and that was just more for healthy reasons. But this cereal has got me eating cereal again every morning. And it's kind of yeah, weird. And I haven't, like you, visited the cereal aisle much in recent years, right? I mean, it's, it's largely a type of food that is on, has been waning. Um, you know, I think you've seen the struggles of the the Kel, of a big cereal, um, and I don't know quite honestly if there's been an, an, an arrival on the on the cereal aisle of protein based and kind of lower carb ones. But certainly, if you look at traditional cereals, even the the quote unquote healthy ones, like if it's like mm -hmm. grape nuts or whatever, um, those still are really heavily grain based and just tons of carbs. So um, I think that's why I wanted to at least try this, and it it just tastes really good. And so um, it makes me wonder if other if other traditional cereal providers are going to get in on the action. 
Yeah. Are you, are you calling Magic Spoon a disruptor? Mike? I think that's where I'm going with this, Chris. <laughs> we're, we're disrupting the cereal chain. Uh, yeah. I, you know, that's something we talked about. I think it would be interesting. I was, you know, looking around online at Magic Spoon and all the coverage is universally the same. Like basically it's, it's delicious. It's kid cereal for grownups, right? It's frosted. It's, it comes in cinnamon, uh, frosted, which is basically vanilla, cocoa and fruity. I think cocoa or vanilla frosted is my favorite. Do you have a favorite? I think cinnamon and, and fruity frosted tastes the most artificial to me, but I also don't like white chocolate and it has kind of those hints, those notes that, that kind of taste weird to me. <laughs> I love that we're getting into the notes on the mid palette, the way it strikes, it's, uh, it's got, it, uh, it tastes like fresh cut garden hose, but fruity, but fruity to me really is a knockoff of Froot Loops. And that's a good thing. It like, it tastes like, it's like I'm back to my childhood eating Froot Loops. Yeah. You know, I think it's, uh, it, for me, I can also taste the, like, if you've ever had like a protein shake, like myoplex or muscle milk or something, it has that whey protein kind of flavor. Like it's slightly metallic on the back end. Um, but that's not enough. It's not a deal breaker for me. Like it's still, there are enough benefits to it, uh, that I enjoy it. Uh, and, um, the one, comp so the, what, the other thing, so I've been trying these keto devices at, for work. I've got a piece coming up on a device called the keto coach. And so it's been interesting because I've had to also find, I need to find milk that will go well with the keto friendly cereal because the regular 2% milk has too much sugar in it. So I need to try like a, a hemp milk or a, a flax milk or something um, to, to wash those, to, to soak up those things, to soak up that, that delicious cereal. And I must say, this is how much I like sugar cereal. I actually really pay attention to the cereal milk. And I don't know if you remember, there was actually a, a startup on Shark Tank like a few years ago that pitched like cereal milk. But anyway, I will say the quality of the cereal milk, if you like that, the kind of thing is really good. It tastes just like you're drink, you're slurping up and drinking from the bowl after a bowl of Froot Loops. And <laughs> this, okay, people are, are you, yeah, people are getting. Are you eight? What is what is going <laughs> on here? Wrong with Mike? I will say though, the the we talked about uh, kind of what makes the actual cereal the crunch. And kind of what that yeah. weedy type taste, um, the grain replacement, the sweetener on the cereal uses allulose and, and basically monk fruit variants. And it actually tastes pretty good. I've had, you know, monk fruit sweetener and I didn't think it was as good. It's not as potent as like traditional sweeteners. And it, but this actually really, they must put a lot on it because it tastes really good. Yeah, that's actually, I mean, not to get too far afield, but I think. You know, when we talk about disruption and all that you know, highfalutin Silicon Valley stuff, I think there is there is a lot of stuff happening in in the sweetener space, and that's something we cover because it has like B two B implications. There's this allulose, which is sort of hip right now, but then there's another company called uh, Nutrition Innovation, I think I can't remember, but they come out they have a different process for refining sugar that's called Nucane. Um, that's supposed to have a lower glycemic index. And then there's also a company out of Israel that's doing something with juices to reduce the amount of sugar. I can't remember off the top of my head, but there's a lot of stuff that sort of recognizes the sweet tooth, especially in America that we have, uh, and trying ways to reduce sort of the ill effects of sugar. You know, one of the things I've been thinking about is how this kind of reminds me of, you know, the Warby Parkers and, and the Harry Shave Clubs of the world where they're basically going direct to consumer um, I think, you know, we saw that a lot early on with those types of products. We're seeing more and more of food. I mean, I've, early on was we saw Soylent doing subscriptions. But uh, I think this is in, in potentially indicative of companies trying to completely disintermediate traditional retail or Amazon and just say, hey, let's really build a brand and have a direct relationship with consumers. Yeah, the, it's funny. The same week that I got the Magic Spoon, I also got the uh, Elemental Snap Chilled Cold Brew Coffee. Uh, Catherine wrote a piece about that a couple weeks back. They, of the $200 bottle coffee, cold brew coffee. Um, but I ordered that as well. And that, that too is like a direct customer purchase. I went to Elemental site, bought it. And so uh, it's interesting the number of food products that I'm ordering directly from places Um instead of just getting them at the store. Yeah, I, I think we're just seeing a lot of that. Um, and that's that's why I think, uh, you know, they're, they're so heavy on the branding, so he heavy on the beautiful boxes. Um, I, I wonder if we're going to see more. There is actually, believe it or not, there's another cereal company out there that looks, I don't know if it's quite a knockoff or they're there before them, a company called Cereal School. 
don't know if you've seen them online. It's, it's very similar wow. kind of a aesthetic from a design perspective. It's a direct to consumer model, um, but it actually is in little baggies, like so, like kind of snack size portions rather than the box, which I still can't get into. Like I want a box. I want to be able to pull a. Yeah, how do you store it in your pantry? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think they're more like, hey, people would like cereal as a bring bring on snack type of thing, but I still think uh, this. There's something about the magic spoon. It just looks like cereal in a kind of a new age, but also throwback kind of way. And then the taste is pretty magical. So I will say, funny, we're talking about the box. I think the box, so we should say that you pay 10, it's basically 10 bucks per box. You have to buy a box of four. So that's 40 bucks. Um, And the boxes are seven ounces as opposed to like the 10 or 12 ounce box that you would get for like sugar smacks or lucky charms or something. So you get, you're paying more for less. Um, and the other thing, the complaint, the biggest complaint I have is the box. The box is kind of flimsy opening. It doesn't like you end up tearing at the box more. And I've found it on all four boxes. It doesn't, they, they have something in their gluing process again. Oh my gosh. I can't believe I'm saying this is like a complaint. My life is too hard. Right. Like, but if they are looking at their, if Magic Spoon is listening and looking at their own sort of workflow and design process, you got to do something with the way they you do the box because it's the I think the paper is too thin or something and it tears pretty easily. Yes, clearly first world problems. I will say I also wonder when big cereals can jump in on this game. Um, I mean, and I think that's worth of discussing, right? I mean, why isn't Kellogg's or General Mills doing something similar? I I, I imagine if they aren't, there I'm sure that. A good percentage of the orders that have come into Magic Spoon over the past couple of months have been from, uh, you know, G- General Mills or Kellogg's, and, and basically those guys are trying it out. Um, I would imagine they're they're considering similar cereals, if not already having it in development, and also potentially even reaching out to Magic Spoon and, and having those conversations. I see a company like that as a logical acquisition candidate, quite honestly. That's interesting because I was thinking about that as well because you and I talked about that. And I'm wondering how do they – that would be a real tough needle to thread, right? You have all this money that you're generating in sales of traditional Fruit Loops. You have all the infrastructure in place to manufacture it at scale. And then how do you introduce basically its replacement? You know, it's like when companies went from DVD sales to online, right? How do you thread that needle so you don't cannibalize your existing – and profitable venture uh, with this new one. It's the same question. Like, how do you sell uh, an Impossible Burger at a restaurant for like three dollars more on the menu? Um, I think that you're probably just targeting a certain demographic. The the challenge is is cereal one of those things where you know you have your kids in the in the cart with you and they, <laughs> or you have this cereal at home and then the parents start acting weird by hiding it from that their kids because. Uh, so I I think that like. Um, I don't think there's necessarily a problem with the price differential. I think that people clearly who are keto or looking to, to eat lower carbs or on like the caveman diet type of thing, um, or, or just a low carb diet, this makes a lot of sense to them. I just wonder if like once a Kellogg's or General Mills jumps in on this game, if they could scale it and, and possibly lower the pricing. Um, cause $40, you know, and $10 per small, small box is a lot of money. It is. And so that brings up the question. Are you going to buy it again? I want to buy it again. I don't know if I can rationalize it. I, and I, quite honestly, I don't know if I want to get back in, even if it's a healthier cereal. Uh, I don't know if I want to get back into pouring a bowl of cereal every morning, like once you've gotten out of that habit. So this has been kind of a nice diversion and, and kind of hark back, harken back to my <laughs> my olden days. But I don't know if I'm building a new habit, quite honestly. Yeah, I would agree with you. I mean, if my son had taken to it more, then, you know, I might, like if he was like, oh, this is the greatest, I'd be like, oh, okay, maybe, but... I, you know, I've still got plenty of cereal left. I don't know. I don't know if I'll buy it again. It's fun. It's good. But like yourself, it's more, it's more of a cereal barrier than a magic spoon barrier. Yeah, I would agree. And and I can't get over the idea that this is too good to be true. It still feels like I, I'm waiting for, you know, the story to come out. And, I, and this is just based on my own kind of weirdness. It's like, it has all the promises of like great taste and like, all the benefits that you kind of want in food. So it almost seems too good to be true. So I'm, I'm just finding myself, like, I just find myself thinking this can't be true. So um, partly don't want to get back into the cereal habit, partly like I just can't believe that the cereal tastes so good. It has all kind of the things you want in, in healthier foods. Right. It's there's, there's what is the catch other than the gigantic. Yeah. Maybe uh, I'm cynical, tag. but I'm still waiting for the catch and the price tag. I think the price tag is, is too much. And 
there's buying friction. Like, um, and I, I guess if I really love something and I felt like I wanted to kind of bring it into my life, I would probably subscribe. Um, I haven't been one of those guys that have jumped on like the, uh, the Harry Shave Club bandwagon. Although I do buy glasses from Warby Parker, I don't. I'm not against establishing a direct to consumer relationship with the brand, but for cereal, I don't know if I want to have a subscription t- uh, and another credit card, com- another company charging my credit card. Yeah, there is that. And then I think it just gets down to the question of, I mean, because you have to get it four boxes at a time, like realistically, how often do you need to subscribe to it to where you can't just order it when you want, right? Like, do I need to make sure, oh, I don't want to run out in three months time or two months time or whatever. And I don't have like a family of six that's gobbling it all up. Well, you're lucky you don't live with me, Chris, because it'd probably be gone in a day with the animals that live with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, seriously, we don't buy sugar cereal. So every time we go on vacation, my daughter and we're staying in a hotel. You know how those hotels always have those big bins of Fruit Loops? Yeah. So every time we go on a f- vacation as a family, my daughter's like downing three bowls in the lobby by the time I've woken up. <laughs> so, uh, so <laughs> I, I, like I said, they're animals, Chris. <laughs> it's a feral <laughs> post-apocalyptic wasteland in the wolf household. Yep. So I want to I want to thank everyone for listening to the first episode of Serial Podcast Reviews. <laughs> and possibly the last. <laughs> possibly the last. So this has been fun, Chris. Thanks for talking about Magic Spoon on uh, this podcast from The Spoon. Hey, thanks, Mike. Talk to you soon. Bye.